Hey, I'm Alicia from mobilitymastery.com and today I'm going to teach you how to release your scaling fascia using a new tool that I have recently discovered for this and just a few disclaimers up front. Um, so this company is called Rad and the tool I'm actually using right here is the original Rad Roller. They're calling these two balls that are kind of stuck together um, manufactured as one thing, uh, the rad roller. Um, we're going to put an affiliate link in there and we do get a little bit of a percentage if you choose to buy this tool. Um, and I don't promote anything I don't love and use myself. So there's a very specific reason I'm actually promoting this tool in particular. I haven't found that many uses for it actually, other than the one I'm about to show you. So if you go to the RAD website, you're going to see all kinds of pictures of people using this in ways I don't necessarily promote or endorse, and that's okay. That's their thing. I'm doing my thing over here. I just want you guys to know that. But this is actually a really cool tool for your scalings or your neck. So your scalings actually and your SEMs. I'm going to show you kind of lump them into one uh, release technique here. And the reason I'm actually even promoting this is because so many of us today need this tissue released. We are looking down all the time uh, on our phones, on our computers. I look down for work when I'm working on people and our anterior neck fascia is getting just super restricted, congested, tight, um, and it can cause a chain reaction of stuff, um, you know, not only nearby in your neck, it can cause neck pain and tension headaches and jaw pain, but it can actually create a chain reaction all the way down your body if it's pulling you into like forward head posture or hunchback, which is actually more a result of all this front stuff getting really tight, pulling on that thoracic area causing the hunchback look. And that can actually lead to everything from mid back pain and shoulder issues to grip problems. If you're an Olympic lifter, I've experienced that myself to even something as far away as plantar fasciitis. So I've actually explored uh, releasing someone's anterior neck fascia uh, for plantar fasciitis that was persistent and not going away. And she, this client that I'm thinking of also had a little bit of hunchback and for, definitely very visible forward head posture and it was the thing that helped her the most. <laughs> so more than releasing anything in the lower body, this one thing helped her. So I feel like this is, you know, worthy of buying this one tool just for this one area because it's such a big area for all of us in the modern world to release, like such an important one. So honestly, like, you know, I've said for years, if I could choose for everybody to release one thing, it would be their quads and hip, quad hip flexors. And that's still true, but if I had to pick one upper body thing these days, it would be the anterior neck, the scalenes and the SEMs, which I'm about to show you. And that's just because, like I mentioned, we're all looking down so much and that detrimental effect it can have all the way down to your feet is just per pervasive. Um, and so I'm gonna recommend that you go grab this and it's gonna make sense to you why I'm having you use this exact tool instead of just a singular ball. Um, it's not going to work very well if you try to use just a lacrosse ball um, or a tennis ball or any other single ball because you can't get the leverage you need. Uh, and so I'm going to show you a way to do this with just this tool um, and nothing else. So you could do it seated, you could do it standing, you could do it at your desk, it doesn't really matter. But if you actually wanted to use a wall, you could will show you a picture of that in this video, just so you know what I'm talking about. Uh, but the exact technique I'm gonna show you would still apply, even if you're using a wall to do it. Okay, so I'm going to demo this on my left side, the left neck here. Um, and so I'm gonna use my left hand and grab the rad roller here. And then I'm gonna just kind of poke around, see what I've got. And what we're looking to target here is pretty much anything from like up here 
at that SEM attachment, um, almost into the occipitals. You could even go back there a little bit. So I don't want you to get hung up on anatomy. I mean, we're just going after the fascia here generally. Um, and anything that's tender, tight, sore is up for grabs. Obviously you don't want to poke yourself in the throat. That's not going to feel very good, but you're looking to target any of this and then even into some of that scaling fascia down here closer to the traps would also be up for grabs. And so the goal here is to push in a bit, not a lot, just find some leverage, some compression. And then these are just some guidelines for movement. Um, and you can use all kinds of stuff here. I'm going to show you a few of my favorites and feel free to make this your own. So you've got looking up, like that's pretty intense on me right now. And then looking to the other side, going tor chin towards your shoulder. Once you're down towards the shoulder, you could do some little side to side movements. So you could draw a circle and you wanna make sure your hair is not getting in there. <laughs> um, so yeah, you could draw a circle. Let's say you find like a really good spot, like in, so maybe you're like right there. You, then you might wanna just explore it with little baby movements back and forth, boom. So this particular technique is gonna be more of a pin and stretch than shearing those fascial fibers. If you happen to try this against a wall, you might get more of a shearing effect, but you wanna be careful here um, to not be too aggressive with the compression, the weight, and then really trying to get a shear because you have the hyoid bone, you have the Adam's apple for you men, you have lots of stuff here. You don't wanna jerk the ball and then end up in your throat. Um, so just get to know your you know, fascia and anatomy here first before trying to shear anything. And the pin and stretch does a lot of good. It'll bring a lot of blood to the area. Um, I mean, this is pretty much it. It's like the options here would be leaning, like letting the weight of my head kind of fall in and then doing it like that. So now I have more leverage, like that's more intense. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> um, I really need this one like all the time. So, so that's really great. And that works really well up by that SEM attachment by the ear. And I'm even getting a little bit of shearing here. But the edge, this is pretty much it, right? You find a spot, you compress it, you move your head. <laughs> so you've got like up, down, circles, back and forth. Um, you've got erect head, right? Like erect spine, straight, and then doing it. You've got tilting it and leaning into it. Um, and then if you want to get into that scaling area, uh, that's pretty good right there. This is why I love this because I'm, I'm able to hold this and, and maneuver around it. If I were just trying to hold one ball, maybe I could do some stuff, maybe, but it would be, my fingers would be in the way, my hand would, it would just feel awkward and not spacious. So this just works super well. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. But you can explore this whole region. You might turn really red like me. Um, once you start to release it, you're gonna get like hot. That's good, it means blood's coming to that area. Um, and if you are like me, and this area is super tight on you, then all of my normal kind of rules for how much time to spend on here might get tossed out the window. Um, even though this is intense, it feels really good. Like it has that feeling to me like, oh my God, I need this so bad. Uh, and so I tend to stay on it longer than I would my calves or my quads, for example. So feel free to do that too. But if this is your first time actually using this technique, then just be aware that you might get super like tired or like, whoa, if it's really intense for you. And that's just a signal from your body that you're overdoing it a little bit. So just make note of those signals, but I could probably spend 30 minutes, like 15 minutes on this side and 15 minutes on this side every day for the next 30 days to like optimize, like get rid of all this tension and optimize it um, and, and feel okay. I wouldn't get sore. I know my body. So I'm just giving you some guidelines and I'm saying like, do what you want with it, adapt it to your lifestyle, your body, your, your body's needs, and just know any rules I give you are 
just guidelines, right? Um, so be safe. And then one last thing to just be aware of here uh, is you could end up on a nerve here. There are a lot of nerves in your neck, so you wanna be aware of that. If you get anything like electrical zingy feeling here, come off. You wanna come off right away, move your neck, move your arm, get blood, you know, usually that'll go away right away. Um, but if you happen to feel a numb sensation uh, in, in this area referring into your shoulder or down into your chest or down your um, arm and your tricep or even maybe back to your shoulder um, and that rotator cuff area, just know that that's, it's not normal, but it is normal <laughs> for a lot of people who have tight tissue here. So you want that not to happen um, eventually, but it's okay if it happens during the release, it just means that that area is super tight and it really needs it. And you're actually starting to feel where that area refers to neurologically. And so it's kind of interesting because you get to feel um, the connections, right? So it's, I feel like it's okay to be on that if it's that numb feeling, but absolutely not okay if it's that electrical zingy feeling uh, and you wanna come off if it's that, and then just try again, find a new spot. So there you go. I love this guy for this thing. I need to be doing this like every day. <laughs> so, uh, you know, you're gonna have to order one of these if you don't already have one. Maybe you have one, um, or maybe you have a similar tool. So if you have a similar tool, try it right now, just a little bit, and then share your experience in the comments below. And if you don't have this yet, go order one, because if you feel like you need this area release for any of the reasons I stated, then it's just gonna be a really good investment for you to put in your toolkit for fascia release, and you'll use it a lot on this one area. So give it a try, share your experience below. I can't wait to read about it. I know I need this one like all the time, so it's a great reminder for me filming this video for you, and I was super excited to, um, just explore this region with this tool. So yay. If you are new here, make sure to hit that subscribe button. I have new videos that go out every single Monday and Wednesday all about fascia and nervous system patterns and finding more freedom. So I hope you'll join me. And if you want to join my email community, we have some free resources for you. Uh, we have some PDF guides for most popular techniques along with a kinetics demo. And depending on when you land on this video, maybe some other fun stuff as well. So you can do that by clicking the link below this video in the description. That's it. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.